Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're going to be running a sample of this old slag from an old abandoned gold mine. Um, and this is slag, and actually it looks like there's some mat in here as well. Uh, and the goal is to run it through the one ton per hour turnkey system behind me. We're going to crush it up, run it across our table, and see if we can liberate any more values from, uh, from this guy's sample. So I'll uh, get it fired up and I'll talk you through it as we go along.
So here's the, the three different cuts off the shaker table from that slag sample. And here's the little bit of material that came off the number one. And I'll get this in a pan here and we can pan it down and take a look. Here's the number two, which is mostly matte. And then here is the number three. And we had the splitter in there and we kind of, you know, set it when we're running these small samples, we just kind of set it where we think it's going to be. So there's, there's quite a bit of slag still in here, glassy slag, but it's about half matte, half slag. So if you're running in production, you can really set that splitter a little bit better. But those are the three cuts and we'll send them back to them. Um, but let's get this pan down and we'll take a look and see what we got in the number one. So I'm just panning the, the top layer off and then I shake it back down into the corner. Sometimes I'll bring it all the way flat when I'm first starting. And when you're finished panning this really fine stuff, I don't even bring the water much past the crescent in the, in the pan. You're just trying to slide that stuff right off the top. And you can do six, eight, ten um, dips with the pan and then bring it back down and shake it all back down to the corner. Patience is the key. You don't want to rush it. You've done all this work and gotten all the way here and it's a shame to pan out all your fine gold and fool yourself into thinking you lost a bunch or don't have as much as you did. So take your time and we're starting to see a little bit of that copper come there at the at the edge so here you've got a little bit of fine gold starting here and it comes all the way around and the tail kind of ends right here and then you have the, the copper collector in front of that and then a little bit of mat. So we'll, uh, we'll get this all bagged up and send it back to the customer, see what he thinks. I saved out a little bit of that crushed up slag and mat. I have about 30 pounds here. And I'm actually gonna try and just direct smelt some with some iron and see if we can get any metal out. And because it's already been smelted, um, I'm going to add a little bit of borax, not as much as I would for virgin uh, material or virgin concentrates. So here's my borax, here's my crucible, and uh, we'll get this thing loaded up. Here's our loaded crucible. It's got our mat in there and some borax. It's probably half and half or maybe two-thirds borax and a third mat. So this thing is going to be put into the crucible here when it gets all molten. And I'm going to use this as a source of iron. And the idea is, is this thing sits down in the bottom of the crucible, there'll be a puddle of mat that'll come up somewhere on this sacrificial bar. And the, the mat is gonna eat away at the iron. And the idea is, is you may have uh, lead sulfide or copper sulfide, all of which is less reactive than iron. And so when you have a little piece of molten copper sulfide that attaches to the steel or touches the steel, the copper is going to switch with the iron and it'll turn into copper metal that gets reduced and the iron replaces the copper with the sulfur and turns into an iron sulfide. And so the, the whole goal is to create a complete mat of iron sulfide and reduce all the more reactive metals down to a little puddle in the bottom of the crucible. And that way when we pour it into our cone mold, we'll get a little puddle of molten metal that is going to solidify into a little bead that we can then get assayed and figure out um, what metal is in this mat and, uh, and the iron sulfide that is created by eating away the steel is a really poor um, holder of precious metals. So the idea is, is that all the precious metals and all the, the base metals um, less reactive than iron are gonna go into that little molten metal puddle at the bottom. So that's how this is gonna work. All right, we got the furnace fired up here. You can see there's the one injector. There's the other one. And uh, we got our crucible pretty well full there. And this thing will get up to well over 2,000 degrees. I've melted uh, big pots of copper and brass in here. 
So I know it'll get hot enough. Okay, it's the next day and the uh, pour has cooled down in our cone mold and so I'll tip this thing over on the concrete here and we'll see what we got. I think the camera may have got knocked over there but here's the slag and actually all of our our good stuff is still down there in the bottom, so let me see if I can knock that out of there and see what we got. So here's our important piece. This is the bottom of the cone. And let's see if I can do this and get it on video at the same time. So let's see if we got anything in the cone. It looks like a little bit of mat that's left over from the smelt, but it doesn't look like there's any metallic metal at all. Let me get it busted up a little bit and we'll see if there's any little beads in there. So there was a little tiny bit of metal in the very bottom of the cone there. Let's see if I can get, it looks like it's copper. It's still got some gray slag attached to it, but right there you can kind of see the copper. But out of 35 pounds, that's the little tiny bit that we recovered. Um, so the old boys did pretty darn good getting all the metal out of their out of their mat and out of their slag. So that's the results from our 31 pounds melted down and re-smelted. Here's our slag, and it is very very glassy. Um, I used only borax, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, so it's a real acidic slag, which makes it real glassy. If, it, if I used a bunch of soda ash um, or added a bunch of soda ash, it would have ended up being real dull and kind of stony or um, not vitreous and glassy like this. The other thing I learned is uh, I, I crushed it just through a jaw crusher and tried to smelt it down that way. Most of the time I use uh, like sand size or powdered material and it took forever to smelt that stuff down because it was so big. Um, it's like melting ice cubes in a cup versus, uh, versus like snow in a cup of water. So the, the surface area wasn't very big and they were real big pieces. So um, in the future I would, I would crush it down smaller and make it... Uh, make it as small as possible with a large surface area so it it melts quicker in the in the slag or in the in the crucible so that's the results of our uh, reprocessing old gold slag uh, both through the turnkey system and also uh, reprocessing it through smelting so hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, my recommendation for this guy is uh, process through the turnkey system get a high grade concentrate and then smelt it down because as we saw uh, smelting of the raw slag and mat um, doesn't produce a whole lot of uh, metallic fracture or gold. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, all of our information is in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.